emergent need as saints go on trial. From Catherine Ramey, Friday, 12th January, 2024, at 9.19 p.m. Today, I am writing because we have Christians who are being taken to trial by the federal government in a manner intended to codify abortion protest as criminal, no matter how individual states respond to the Dodds SCOTUS decision to vacate Roe v. Wade as a quote-unquote constitutional right. The Supreme Court finally examined America's abortion law and gutted it as not being a constitutionally guaranteed or rather protected right. As the 73 SCOTUS argued, the right the court ruled had been created out of thin air and was nowhere in the U.S. Constitution. That means that the scandalous federal law passed by Chuck Schumer, Ted Kennedy, and a host of other death-on-demand politicians in 1993, known as the FACE Act, the Freedom of Access to Clinic and Church uh, Clinic Entrances Act, should be void. There is no federal law on paper that makes abortion a constitutional right for women. As we are all going about our daily lives, the feds have arrested saints for rescues done in 2020. A rescue is a sit-in protest intended to give women the right to reconsider the killing of their unborn child. It is no more dramatic in action than sitting in to protest low wages, an unpopular sewer project, the cutting down of trees, and a myriad of other historical protests raised in this nation and around the world. I urge you to go to stifledcry.com forward slash listen and listen to the testimonies of any of the listed defendants who have been interviewed by their podcast. Paul Vaughn, Dr. Coleman Boyd, Eva Edel, who survived a Russian concentration camp internment as a child, to name just a few of the interviews they will be posting over the next weeks. These are just a few of the people being threatened with 11 to 21 years in prison for such protests. Paul Vaughn had armed federal agents come to his house and threaten his family with weapons in order to arrest him for the 2020 rescue. Boyd is an ER physician who has determined not to cower before the Biden administration, thugs, that arrested him for the same. Uh, Eva Adel is an 88 years old and has been active in helping women with unplanned pregnancies, rescuing, and has been a public speaker for decades. Again, their testimonies of faith can be found at stifledcry.com forward slash listen. I list below a number of other persons who also under federal indictment for their efforts to persuade women not to have their babies killed. The first group are highlighted as G9, meaning they did a rescue in Arlington, Virginia, and have already been tried and found guilty of violating the FACE Act. They face between 11 and 21 years in prison and are scheduled to be sentenced in May of this year. A Google search will allow you to locate their mailing addresses and phone number of wicked Judge Colleen Kolar-Cotelli who found them guilty and plans to punish them. You can write or call and politely remind her there is a God in heaven who will be judging her in future. She would do well to heed the warning given by the Lord. Do not touch mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Then there is the federal prosecutor, a shameful wretch by the name of John Crabb, You may wish to search for him and suggest he speedily repent of being a lapdog for the abortion industry. If he repents, we can anticipate he will stop licking his own ass and tell the Biden administration, sorry, the Biden mafia, to go find another mutt to do their bidding. There are six things the Lord hates. Yea, even seven are an abomination unto him. And this includes hands that shed innocent blood. Johnny has made it his mission to facilitate the ongoing bloodbath that takes place at abortion mills and in the secrecy of private homes through taking pills to force a quote-unquote miscarriage of an unwanted child. Either way, 
he will need to explain to the Lord why he has promoted murder and the persecution of those willing to try and stop it. Without further ado, I am listing the names of those indicted for the crime of trying to save the lives of innocent unborn children. Then I leave you to rest with your own conscience over how best to quote unquote remember those in bonds as though in chains with them. Scripture is clear that our job down here is quote justice and only justice shall you pursue. To simply delete this appeal is to side with those who profit off the deaths of unborn children. I trust those who are on my list are not that callous and will do something to see justice is done. Ultimately, all of these individuals will find their vindication in Jesus Christ. But we who are part of their eternal family should take opportunity to come alongside of them in their suffering. You can call me if you need ideas as to how this can be accomplished. The G9 rescuers are Lauren Handy. Some news articles refer to her as Hardy. So Lauren Handy or uh, Lauren Hardy. Will Goodman. Herb Garati, G-E-R-A-G-H-T-Y. Jay Smith. Heather Idoni, Jonathan Darnell, Jean Marshall, John Hinshaw, Paulette Harlow, and Joan Bell. Now, this is Jonathan O'Toole interrupting Kathy Ramey's letter. And uh, just for an editorial comment, I, uh, I, I met Joan Bell, Joan Andrews Bell, on more than one occasion. Lovely woman of God. Um, I met, and uh, Joan Andrews Bell has spent, I think, accumulated years behind bars uh, for peaceful um, protest, nonviolent protest, uh, since the the FACE Act was passed. A very uh, lovely lady. I met uh, Jonathan Darnell and Jean Marshall in D.C. protesting the um, stolen election in 2020. Not on January 6th. I didn't make it to that, but about a month earlier. End of editorial note. One defendant pled guilty without a trial and was sentenced to 11 months for saving the government's time. All are walking through, quote, the mighty seas of Psalm 77 19 and could use encouragement and prayer at the least when I get permanent addresses on them I will pass those on for those willing to write them in prison the next group are under indictment for a rescue in Tennessee also in 2020 they have been split into two trials with the first trial starting on January 16th just a few short days from now the trial is at the federal courthouse in Detroit Michigan the other half of the group are being tried in Nashville, Tennessee, on April 24th. The decision to adjudicate all those federal, these federal prisoners of Christ in three different districts is, I believe, in the hope that a multiplicity of federal districts that find them guilty will not be easily dismissed in later appeals, including those that travel to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Detroit trial defendants are Heather Idoni, is on this list too. Cal Zastro, who took Bibles into Russia and China when it was at risk to his life and freedom to do so. Dennis Green. Denny, he too stole Bibles into countries that had banned them. Coleman Boyd, an emergency room physician with a large family and a farm to run, but who trusts in the Lord. Joel Curry. Chet Gallagher, a former police officer who chose to sit down with the rescuers rather than arrest them. Justin Phillips. Paul Vaughn, who was awakened to the feds on a fateful early morning as noted above. Know that they always go judge shopping before indicting people. The feds want to have judges who are usually, clearly, in their pockets. Their judge is federal judge Alita Trauger. And the prosecuting team consists of attorneys Amanda Klopp, 
U.S. Attorney's Office in Nashville, Kyle Bolton, U.S. Trial Attorney, and Wilfred T. Bae Jr., that's spelled B-E-A-Y-E, Jr., U.S. Trial Attorney. Pray for all these that the Lord would disturb their plans to imprison these defendants. These that follow go to trial on April 24th in Nashville, Tennessee. Eva Edel, 88 years old and survivor of a concentration camp during World War II. Um, Eva Zastro, James Zastro, you have to applaud the sacrificial family. And Paul Plas, or Place, Place. P-A-U-L-P-L-A-C-E. I'm sure I've butchered his pronunciation. Paul P-L-A-C-E. Also pray for those attorneys, many working at their own expense or with groups like the Thomas More Legal Society, as they seek to offer the best God-directed defense possible. Their names are below. Jody Bell. David R. Heru. H-E-R-O-U-X. David... Cooper, Manuel B. Russ, Larry Crane, Robert Paris, P A R R I S, Robert Paris, Steve Crampton, Bill Conway, Rayburn McGowan, Leonard Lucas, Carrie Haymaker, Steve Thornton. The Nashville defendants being tried in Detroit are being tried under a felony indictment that includes conspiracy charges, conspiracy to hold a sit-in, that adds another 10 years to the, quote, misdemeanor felony created just for these Christian protesters that alone nets an 11-year sentence. It is hoped the Nashville trial will only involve the, quote, misdemeanor felony, unquote. If you have a list of Christians, you can forward this to That would be great. Encourage those in Detroit and later Nashville to show up to stand in witness. There is nothing sadder than a courtroom filled with abortion zealots and only a few saints willing to show up and witness the court's bad behavior so as to hold them accountable. Call local Detroit churches and encourage them to attend. Let's all do something. Warmly in Christ, Catherine Ramey.